Hi, welcome to another episode of AMI Today. This is Dr. Mike Carberry, and I have a very special guest today, uh, Eric Groberg, almost Dr. Eric Groberg. <laughs> You're uh, working on your PhD, right, Eric? Yes. Yep. And that's in? Um, it's in uh, mechanical engineering with my area of uh, emphasis being in uh, uh, occupational biomechanics, ergonomics, occupational injury prevention. And you have all your data and you just have to do your dissertation? Yeah, I uh, just have to finish up my dissertation, so okay. uh, home stretch. So Eric and uh, the Carberries have a, a, a good background, a long background. We've been working with Eric now for almost a decade. Um, but we've been working with his company for even longer than that. Uh, and Eric, you're, you're one of the executives at JTEC. Yep. So I'm the, the clinical director for, for JTEC Medical. Okay. And JTEC is a computerized range of motion. Um, I, we've been using them since our clinic in Pennsylvania in the late 1990s. That's when we got our first JTEC. Yeah. So. It's, been a, it's been a while. And it's... Uh, your guys' records go back quite, quite, quite far. Yeah, well, here's how it came about. Um, my wife is a physical therapist, and we knew that we wanted to objectivize our findings, mm -hmm. and we had ways to do that where we created a functional physical exam, which we now teach to our AMI clients, and we can even create points for each test, and we can measure it and show improvement, but we wanted an objective outside test that would show us alongside of our results that it's coinciding, and she wanted computerized range of motion. Range of motion is the gold standard in physical medicine. Um, if you can improve range of motion, you know, a lot of orthopedic surgeons will send somebody to a physical therapist and want the range of motion readings to see that it's improving because if you have range of motion in a joint, the joint will stay healthy. If you don't, you'll lose it because of the inhibition quality to the joint. So we brought on JTEC. My wife said we could use goniometers but what she found when she was working in a hospital setting is the insurance companies would challenge the goniometers and say, well, how do we know that your clinicians were up to standard? Right. Which is, yeah. was, is kind of a cheap shot. You know, they were physical therapists. They were licensed. But um, so they just went the, at the hospital she was at, they went the range of motion, computerized range of motion. So she said, that's what we're going to do. And in our search for <clears throat> range of motion tests, we came across a few companies but the reason we settled for JTEC is at that time, and it's probably still the case, but you were the only ones that actually printed a report, not only for the spine and all the areas of the spine, but also for all the other extremities. And, and I don't know if that's still true. That, that is correct. We're really the only company out there that manufactures in our systems. It's an integrated system where our wireless devices are integrated directly with our software. Um, there's a few other companies out there that will generate a report, but it's two separate companies. It's one company that manufactures devices, contracted with a software company. The problem with an integrated system like that is if there's ever issues, it's hard to delineate. Is it a software issue, right. hardware issue? So we're ISO quality certified, and I think one of the big things that JTEC is known for is um, the quality of products that yep. we uh, produce, but also the level of support for our customers. We've been in business for 30 years, so. And it, it's actually um, measured to the AMI standard for range of motion for the joints. That's, that's correct. So our reports in real time, you can go and you can build and save protocols. Like for AMI, you all have a very specific methodology of how you utilize our system. So right. the initial computerized range of motion exam is uh, a full body range of motion assessment. So cervical, thoracic, lumbar, left and right upper extremity, left and right lower extremities. So in our software, you can go in and you can build and save that protocol permanently mm -hmm. in the software. And it's all audio driven. You don't even have to pay attention to the software. When you're done capturing the last rep for whatever test you're on, it just automatically kicks you to the next test, the sequence. So that full body range of motion assessment, the technicians can get through that whole assessment and have objective data that the test results are automatically compared to AMA norms, uh, automatically calculates AMA validity. If it's a follow-up exam, it automatically charts progress in previous exams. They can get through that full body range of motion assessment in 12 to 15 minutes. When they're done, they're literally clicking one button and it automatically generates that narrative report. Right, and I'm not sure which one it was, but back in Pennsylvania in the day, we had a physical therapist working for us. Her name was Robin, I can't remember her last name. And then we also had a, a professor of exercise physiology, Dr. Greg Byron, he had his PhD. And I believe it was Greg that said, we need to do JTEC, they're the gold standard, they're the best one, that you want the best one because you want the validity of your tests 
Um, so we've been using it ever since then. And there's been multiple benefits of getting these tests done. Um, one for the data and man managing the patient, but there's a lot more to it. So we're going to touch on some of those things. So first I want to touch on compliance. So we were touching on that just a little bit in our, uh, uh, what we talked about just there. Measure to the AMA's guidelines. You now have a, a gold standard, the closest thing you can come to, to an infallible test, I believe. That's my opinion. Um, and so let's talk about the compliance of this test and how it can help you uh, managing your patient. Yeah, so with, I mean, there's definitely, it's been going on for a while now, there's a strong push for clinicians to provide more objective documentation to show that at the onset of care that that care is necessary mm -hmm. and then as they go through care and their treatment plan that the care that's being provided is in fact getting the patient better which that is really at the crux of what our systems are utilized for uh, initially they're used to establish medical necessity and to show objectively and have objective data based on the AMA norms that essentially okay this is what the AMA says a normal healthy patient should have for these range of motions. Right. It gives you that data to establish initially that the medical necessity as you lay out that treatment plan and then as at the different points as they go through care, now you have measurable objective data and documentation right. to show all that care that you provided that you're billing for is in fact getting the patient better yeah. and then of course at, at uh, you know at discharge, it also gives you data to, to show objectively that the patient has in fact reached max medical improvement. Right. So. so what we do, and very similar to that, is um, we actually measure all the compromises the patient has to their quality of life and their activities of daily living, and then we establish a problem list, and that's problems with their bodies. And, and we test muscles and we test, you know, but range of motion is one of those things. So it goes on our problem list, and we know that to establish medical necessity, if you can show a resolution of the problems on the problem list that has coincided with an improvement in their activities of daily living, you've established medical necessity. And this test is one of the, one of the things we use and is one of the really gold standard things that we use to measure that. So winning audits, it, it, we've always won, you know, we've done tremendously well in audits for medical necessity because, in fact, I don't think we've ever even lost a medical necessity audit. Um, because we've been able to show, look, the person had this, you have an agreement with them, insurance company, that you're going to cover their activity of daily living. Look at the compromise they had. We went to work. We started improving. Look at their range of motion getting better. Look at their muscle strength getting better. Look at their posture, all their things. And at the same time, they're regaining their activity of daily living. Exactly. And that's, that's where our systems are used. It's, it's, uh, it's a tool for the clinicians or just to back up the clinical decision making or you know, if they're seeing improvements in ADLs, patient reported improvements, right. now you have that objective data that validates and substantiates that. Right, which is one of the things when I first did an integrated practice that I wanted a way to objectively measure, which we have now. Mm -hmm. And your company has been part of that for the last quarter of a century. Yep. Um, but that's not where you stop with helping. You establish um, other things too. There's financial benefits from using your machine. Right, and that, that's something that obviously, you know, with AMI's model, our system really is the foundation providing that objective documentation of care. But we understand that obviously these are clinicians running businesses, they gotta keep the lights on. So it is something that's a direct source of revenue. Um, there's a established CPT code that's designated and stipulated to bill for range of motion testing. Mm -hmm. that, that CPT code 95851, range of motion measurements, it does specify it no, does need to include a written report. Yes, and, and your machine prints And it does it automatically, there yeah. So The code does include the report. So if you buy, if you save money and buy a machine that doesn't print a report, guess what you're going to do? You're going to spend time writing a report, <laughs> right. which is less efficient and cost more in the long run. Yeah, the reality is you could do the same mm -hmm. thing that our systems, you could go buy some bubble inclinometers and write down the data and everything right. and have your own spreadsheets. Our systems are all about efficiency, right. getting the patient in and out. And so that, that source of revenue directly from billing for testing, that CPT code 95851 for range of motion testing, it's billed in units per spine region and per extremity. Mm -hmm. So for that initial full body range of motion assessment they're doing, uh, they're able to build seven units of yeah. that. And we do that initially. What happens is if they pass an area um, completely, like say if it's uh, right, left upper extremity, 
there's three areas. There's the shoulder, the elbow, mm -hmm. and the wrist. And if they pass all three of them, then we don't do, test that again. You don't worry about that right. as far as your re-exam. So it even helps guide you in your clinical decision making exactly. on what areas to focus on. So the, the reimbursement for those tests get less and less each time. But what we figured out for us, it's running about an average of $100 a test. Mm -hmm. We get more in initially because we're doing seven areas. We get less towards the end because you're getting them better. And there's less areas. But still... We're doing that test every two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. So when we're really hopping, a practice doing like 200 visits a week is going to be doing about 25 of those tests a week. Right. So that's even at $100, you're talking about $2,500 a week. You're talking about week. paying off the machine <laughs> in two weeks. Most of the AMI clients, that the customers that have used our systems, I would say on the conservative end, what they invest in that system, and it's just a one-time investment, they're generating that in revenue every month. Some of them are generating two to three times that yeah. actual investment every well, month. I know we paid month. ours off. We calculated it was like two weeks we paid it off. But um, that's not the only way you're getting revenue. You're also winning audits. Right. You're also establishing, you know, if you eliminate the do you hurt, do you not hurt, you have to have an objective way to measure and you can actually say, well, you know, I'm glad you feel great, Mr. Patient, but you're still not where you need to be. And we're still making improvement from one re-exam to the next. So your machine does that. It, uh, it actually establishes a need for care even when the patient's feeling no symptoms. And it also um, helps you to win audits because you're using it as an objective measurement. So it's not just that one direct revenue source, it's also an indirect That's revenue right. source. That's right, yeah. And, and ever since Obamacare, they, the government, you know, they invest a lot of money for conducting and all the insurance companies, these post-payment audits, which yeah. they can come in at any time and an insurance company can say, we want to see the records of these 20 or 30 patients that they've already been paid on for the services. And if they don't have the documentation to show initially that that medical necessity for the care and then show that the care that they've already been reimbursed for and provided if they don't have the documentation to show that they got better, they can come back and say, well, we want that $100,000 back. And yeah. so when, when clinics are hit with those post-payment audits, if they don't have their ducks in their own documentation, I mean, sometimes that's that, that can shut the doors. Well, the nice thing about your product is when you get good at it, and what we usually do is get two, you know, a couple of clinicians trained to do it. We're not having uh, a practitioner do it or a nurse right. practitioner yeah. or MD. We're having a clinician do it, like one of our rehab techs. And... Um, they can get really efficient at it and really good at it. So these tests can be done in you know 15 minutes or less, 10 minutes or less. Um, and so the, it's good for the patient because the patient doesn't want to come in and go through an hour long range of motion. Yeah, test. it's also really great. I mean, to be able to show the patient, you talk about you know usually when you know the patient's feeling better, oftentimes the underlying core issues still have not been addressed. Yeah. So from a patient education marketing standpoint to show the patients that data, this is where you were, you know, where you started, this is where you are now, I know you're feeling better, but this is where we still need to get you to right. to get this back to. This is where to, you told us you wanted to yeah, get to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the thing we do is we do not allow, allow our technicians to interpret the test. Even though your machine makes it easy to interpret the test, mm -hmm. we allow that for our clinicians, our uh, nurse practitioners or whoever's supervising the case. Um, they'll interpret it and report to the patient and say, this is what you did. So what we do is we'll do our range of motion test the day before the re-exam. Mm -hmm. So then when they come for the re-exam, the nurse practitioner has that information before she even starts her exam or he starts his exam, and she can go, oh, look, he's getting better in his neck, and, and, and show the patient, look, you are getting better. It's not just the way we're doing this test, and it's not just the way you're feeling, but look, your range of motion has improved. Functionally, you're improving. Yeah, and that, that's the perfect model as far as utilizing our systems. Um, it's it's not the doctor or the clinician that's doing the evaluation. Anybody can do the evaluation. The nice thing is, especially with AMI's model, it's a standardized process. They're doing literally that same protocol over and over. It's driven by audio prompts. There's videos in the software that'll show you how to do every single test. Yep. But Which once they've it done easy. it, once they've done it for like a week, the learning curve is pretty, pretty steep where it's just it's just knocking these exams out and then giving that data over to the clinician to help obviously have that objective data to guide them in their clinical decision making. But there's also another layer we haven't even touched on yet, and that's the mental attitude of the patient. So when you're, when you're treating somebody and giving them something for pain, they know when you're done, when they're out of pain. And then they go, why am I coming in here? But when you're actually trying to improve function, you know, some people have a high pain threshold, they don't feel it. So this gives them a measurable way to go, I am getting better. This is improving my life. 
this is the reason I'm able to do all these things now. All right. Because they can see it. So it allows to not only our compliance with the insurance company, but improves patient compliance with the care plan. Patient retention, like if, if mm -hmm. patients, for example, start dropping off their treatment plan, you can show them, okay, this is where you were when you came in, right. this is where we had you, yeah. and then you stopped coming down and now you've kind of dropped down here. So all that work we did, we have to now redo and, and right. just show them that there's still, to address the underlying core issues, still work to be done. There's even another layer that we have <laughs> used, you guys. We've had patients come in on a care plan, uh, doing better, and in the middle of the care plan, get in a car wreck. And now they become a PI case. Right. And then the PI, the op opposite attorney, is saying, well, they were under care before, they had a problem before. And we can say, well, they did. And here's where they were. And here's and the day. to this the, yep. point. Yeah. And here's the day they had the accident. And they started back down here. So we now have a definitive way to show this incident damaged the patient. Yeah, and you bring up a good point. I mean, our systems are used in all all different uh, clinical applications, different healthcare practitioners. Um, the personal injury market is huge because usually the med legal market is where things are the most highly scrutinized. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, most of the AMI customers that I interface with and talk with, they're not just seeing like 100% major medical. You know, they're usually seeing a mix, right? right? So this is absolutely something that you can use and bill for on your major med patients, personal injury work comp, typically the fee schedules. The Medicare fee schedule for that seven units for the full body exam is about 155. Across the board, it's generally like work comp or personal injury. The reimbursement's gonna be about 150 to 200%. But the real value with those kind of cases, especially personal injury, auto accident cases, is the number one uh, like medical decision point, mm -hmm. or if you look at the AMA guides, how they calculate impairment ratings, the number one objective data or or contribution of how the AMA guides calculates impairments is loss in range of motion. Right. So by having that data on your, your personal injury cases, you know the auto insurance companies, their case adjusters, they just are inputting clinical findings. You know what it does for case settlement values, case resolution. So yeah, it's it's really something that. Um, with all the different type of cases, even with pay cash patients, right. being able to, to use it on that, that end. So Now, the way that the test is done, for people who are not familiar with it, um, there, it, you, it makes you do that test enough times to make sure that it's a valid test. That's correct, yeah. And that's everything that are, is in our system. There's nothing in our system software or test that JTEC has come up with. Right. We stick by the book, the AMA guides. Right. So the AMA has very specific validity criteria when it comes to spine range of motion tests. The AMA says for a spine range of motion test to be considered valid, you have to ca capture three consecutive reps that are within five degrees or 10% of one another. Mm -hmm. And the AMA guides, they give you up to six reps to meet that AMA validity criteria. It doesn't matter if it's reps one, two, three, or four, five, six. In our software, this is just like one example of like streamlining those those exams. Whenever that AMA validity criteria is met, then it just would kick you to the next test. If it's the first three reps, it'll move to the next Go test. If you next haven't point. met it, it'll just prompt you to keep capturing data until you've met that validity criteria. Right, right, right. So there, there's nothing but good things, and I, this. You know, I've been using it for a quarter of a century. Our clinics have been using it. It's it's never been something where I go, boy, I wish we didn't have that machine ever. Never, right. Ever. And for, for a quarter of a century, that's pretty good. One thing you know a little bit more about than I do, uh, but it is something that's important to medical people, is Medicare now has standards where that you have to show improvement. Um, right, yeah, and, and as, as we all know, like as Medicare goes, the other insurance providers are gonna be um, you know, following pretty soon. So CMS and Medicare, they came out with this um, merit-based incentive program. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's every two years they're, they're um, reviewing clinic records based on four areas. And based on their review, um, they can increase the reimbursement for all services provided up to 4%. So again, every two years, a 4% increase on everything yeah. that adds up but they can also decrease by four years. So three, three, three of the four areas that they use to determine that sliding scale every two years, our systems directly uh, like line up with. Mm 
yep. and provide those uh, three points. And the fourth one is just the cost of care that they're providing. So, so that has a financial benefit because Medicare could increase their payment, but <clears throat> the morale incentive that it creates with your staff, um, where you're having objective measurements and you realize we are helping these people. Absolutely, yeah. And, and the medical people coming in going, this is not, they're not winging it. They're actually measuring and they're actually getting results. Um, it's just it's just a win-win all around. I tell people, you know, I've had people give me some resistance. I don't want to use the JTEC machine. I don't want to use the range of motion. Machine. And I'm like, why would you not? There's nothing negative about it at all. It's like win-win-win all the way through. I mean, it helps you every step of the way. Gives you credibility, um, gives you compliance, gives you uh, security knowing that what you've done and got paid for is something you're going to be able to keep because you can prove what you did was working. Absolutely. You talk about morale or like around the office. You know, these different insurance providers, the case adjusters, they're, they've got a stack of cases sitting on their desk and what typically happens when uh, clinics use our system is once they've established that precedent. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? They're they're looking for low hanging fruit yeah. as far as you know which claims, which clinics don't have the documentation where they can deny payment or yeah. make. It. So once they establish that precedent, that's typically what you know feedback we hear from our customers is they don't hear a lot from those insurance companies ask questions because they know they have the objective data and the documentation yeah. to validate whatever it is that they're the care they're providing, the services they're billing for. Right, when you first start into this model, um, a lot of times you create a new clinic and you'll get a probing audit like maybe a year and a half, two years into the practice. Um, and a probing audit usually looks like four or five charts and they just wanna see these charts. And we've had a number of our clients tell us they got those probing charts or, or, or audits, mm -hmm. never heard from the insurance company again. Yeah, So absolutely. they look at it and they go, this is not low-hanging fruit. These people obviously know what they're doing. They're easier fish to fry, We right? don't want to yeah. get in a fight with, the, with somebody who <laughs> has a bazooka. Let's go fry some fish that are easier yeah, to fry. Yeah, exactly. So it's a win-win all around. Now, you're going to do a video tomorrow. Um, you're here at one of our trainings mm -hmm. now. We're going to do a training. You come to a lot of our trainings, and you explain your product to our clients, which is really appreciated by our clients to have somebody of your caliber there explaining how this thing works. And you're going to do an, a, a, a video tomorrow demonstrating that so that all of our clients have access to that in the future. That's right. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to film myself performing that full body my full body range of motion assessment right. and then have that available but but also just to show and and it's again I think at the beginning when when customers are implementing our systems um, there is a learning curve and particularly at the beginning you want to make sure that the data you're capturing is accurate it's reliable it is indicative of that patient's function. So mm -hmm. taking your time to do it, but that learning cur curve, like I said, is pretty steep. Where having, and just to be able to show that, that hey, if you have the system set up correctly, all of the um, functionalities, you know, having the test move automatically from one to the next, how quickly you can actually do those exams. So, so is your company doing anything with like universities or, or sports or anything like that, or is that? So Absolutely. In fact, um, we just had uh, a pharmaceutical company that's um, initiating a you know global clinical uh, cl clinical trial mm -hmm. that just purchased I think ninety of our systems. We've got ongoing uh, research studies um, going all over the world, um, and and again with our products being you know FDA certified, ISO quality certified. When you get into that area, you know, and you're looking at uh, clinical trials, you're looking at getting published research, they look at your measurement tools and there has to be established, you know, the reliability of the tools. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we have uh, numerous, like, research institutions, universities, uh, medical companies, pharmaceutical companies that are utilizing it for research purposes. So. so when we first started working with you 25 years ago, you were a relatively new company. Um, and I know way back then, the, the inclinometers, they were wired, mm -hmm. and then they became, uh, um, you could put attachments on them and make them wireless. Yes. And now they're all wireless pretty much, aren't they? Yeah. JTEC was, act so JTEC Medical was actually the first company that patented the use of digital inclinometry for medical purposes. That's how we got our start. Okay. And at first it was, it was two, two, the two inclinometers 
wired together. I remember that we had the long yeah. wire in our office, and, and then and then it would have to be hardwired to a box that would connect to your computer. Yeah. We moved to wireless systems in 2005, and we had like a few iterations of that first wireless technology. But a few years ago, we just released our latest generation of wireless device and wireless communication technology. And then again, at that same time, we released our new software platform interface called Northstar. Mm -hmm. And so we're constantly, as a company, you know, making improvements, advancements to our systems. And a lot of that is you know, based on feedback from our customers. Right. So now, we've never talked about this, so I'm going to surprise you with a little right. question. Hopefully I don't get us in trouble. But, <laughs> um, I noticed when we first started working with you, we, we got those inclinometers and we just would put them on a metal wheeling tray and our guys would put them down and they'd break. Not right away, but we'd have to send them back and you guys, and, and I'd get on the phone, and I remember getting on the phone years ago with some of your techs and they're like, what did you do with my inclinometers? I'm like, those are mine, no, they're ours. Because <laughs> they were like, this is my baby. Did you, are you putting it down on foam? And I'm like, on foam? They go, these are very delicate things. So we would put foam down because mm -hmm. we didn't want to keep sending them in to get them recalibrated and, and fixed. But I've noticed that hasn't happened in probably a decade. So did your, your leads get more hardy? So this is a, actually, it's a perfect like, follow-up to what I was saying about continually advancing and improving our products. The old technology and the inclinometers it used to work on, it was inside of it, almost like a pinwheel, like a half circle that would pivot. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, in the last probably five years or so, we've moved to accelerometer, uh, accelerometer technology. So there's no moving parts in there. So, yeah, wow. that's that's why. So it's more hardy. Before, you know, the, the little pinwheel, it would, like, stick. Yeah. And so, again, because we, we see, get that feedback from our customers that getting sent in to, you know, repairs and, clean them out. Well, we, it was totally move. worth it. It was a, a great upset, and I would be mad at my clinicians if they did that, because I'm like, you don't put them down hard on the metal surface. you got to put them on the foam. These are delicate instruments, and I was starting to sound like your guys. Right, take care right. Of them. What did you do to my ankle and others? Yeah, so, I, and I can tell you, you know, from uh, working for the company for eight and a half years, and I don't even know how many, like, work trips I've logged, but we've all been through TSA. We see how they treat our, oh, yeah. our stuff. Um, very robust. Um, okay. Our our failure rates, as far as industry standards, are ten to twelve times less than what the industry standards are. And and you know we provide ongoing support. Like if they're on, you know, maintenance plans um, where there's scheduled maintenance every three to five years, mm -hmm. where they'll go in our technicians, they'll replace the rechargeable batteries, internal circuit boards, or anytime new better technology exists, we're constantly going to um, work at, at, you know, keeping up with, uh, you know, new technology and, and advancing our products. Now, I know when you have a good company like you have, you don't want to give away any of your future secrets, but any hints about what might be coming in the future? Or? Well, um, I, you know, there's, there's, there's always different things that we're looking at to improve our products or come up with new things, but to be perfectly honest with you, probably one of the, the biggest ways that as a company we've been able to always continually advance our products is we actively elicit feedback from our customers because we're just a bunch of nerds sitting in our office. We, we, <laughs> we're not doing testing and so the most valuable feedback we get is people boots on the ground using our, our products. In fact. If one of our customers submits, we have a place on our website they can submit feature requests. Mm -hmm. If one of our customers submits a feature request that we end up implementing into our systems, right. we'll give them free support because that's really as a company how we, what we've relied on and how we've been able to stay ahead of the curve. And yeah. some of that is even just changes in healthcare. If there are changes with certain um, documentation requirements, it's our customers that you know bring that to our attention. So. Right. Well, Eric, I got to tell you, it's been a, a pleasure working with your company and working with you personally over the last few years um, because we, yeah. our clients have been satisfied. We're very satisfied. You provide a great service to our effort to change healthcare, which is what we're trying to do, trying to make it more function based, less symptom based. And you, that's right up the alley of what your company is all about measuring function and showing objectively this is the difference we're making with our services. So. Thank you so much yeah. for being part of this today. And, and likewise, I mean, probably the biggest compliment I could give to AMI, we've worked with other practice management groups, and 
we've been working with you all since you started AMI. Mm -hmm. uh, even after all these years, I still have not had a single AMI customer that's ever come back and said, boy, uh, I just I just didn't really get anything out of the AMI program. Really? Or not a single customer AMI customer that I've ever worked with has ever come back and, and ever said anything other than positive things, which I think is probably the biggest testament of what you've put together and developed. Right. I certainly appreciate that. I was going to give you a compliment in the show, but I'll end it on the compliment for us as well. well so sounds good. Yeah, it's a good, right. a good relationship. We're going to continue on in the future and That's right. change healthcare. So, thanks so much for listening and tuning in. If you don't know about JTech or you haven't checked into it, uh, you can contact your rep at AMI, and we will get you in touch with uh, Eric. And at that time, hopefully, it'll be Dr. Eric. And um, and JTech, it's a great product. It's really served us well for a quarter of a century, and will probably serve us well for another quarter of a century and serve you well as well. So thanks for listening. This is Dr. Mike Carberry, AMI Today. We'll see you next time.